Um, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Bartek. I'm a co-founder of Perfect Dashboard, but before we actually made Perfect Dashboard, I was running a web development agency for almost eight, eight, eight years. So I'm not a technical person. I was responsible for new business and for project management. So I decided to prepare for you 10 tips concerning that area. And I do hope that you might find it uh, useful in your work. Uh, those strategies I want to talk you about with, uh, they certainly help our business. They helped us grow from small four-person company to 15-person web development agency in six years. So it was uh, good for us. So I would like to invite you all to try those strategies because there's nothing to lose. Not even time, actually. You can only gain more experience, more knowledge, and, and uh, hopefully more money. So let me ask you the question. Who among you all is satisfied with the level of income generated right now? You are satisfied. So satisfied. And you are web developers, freelance web developers. Uh, you can leave the room now. <laughs> <laughs> if you are satisfied, go have a beer. Rich as shit, just use those money, buy the most expensive drink at the bar and, and, and have a good time. But uh, actually, uh, being serious, uh, it, uh, oh, it works, wait. So, uh, I would like to ask you once again, uh, who has done the job, the work, the project for the same customer more than three times. That's a, okay. More than five times. <laughs> three times a day. Okay. And uh, in your best guess, what is the percentage or uh, percentage of the project you do for the, uh, the existing customers over ten? In five percent. Five percent. And over twenty. Okay, so uh, what we learned in our journey as a development uh, company is that if we don't focus on the existing customers, it's a high time to, to start doing that. Why? Well, the answer for this question is actually quite easy because uh, selling to the existing customer is five times less expensive when uh, then selling to the new customer. It is actually calculated, studies, studies show this. Uh, also, it's much more easier and time efficient. It's, you know, it's like, it works exactly like drinking and here in the job, we know exactly how drinking works. So it's definitely easier to go for the drinks with someone you already know, maybe even your friend, then ask someone you just seen on the street, a like total stranger. Like, you don't want to look like a creep, you won't ask for, to, to, to have a beer someone you see on the street, probably. So, if you already know the guy or the company, it's easier to establish contact, it's easier to get a deal, and that's why exactly it's a so great idea to keep in touch with your top customers from the past on the monthly basis. So uh, I get the question quite often, how do I get with touch without sounding weird? Like, why should I call them? Why should I write to them? Why well, I don't want to look stupid in front of my customers. So uh, I came up with the solution and I found it very useful. Like uh, every three months, I send them an email, personal email written manually, like using my real mailbox. And uh, I don't sell. I just send them, an, for example, an article concerning their branch of business. If they do e-commerce, I'm sending them the newest uh, data about e-commerce business. Is if they are in the real estate industry, I'm sending them an article concerning, for example, how to increase your web presence when you sell houses or apartments. So this way, you don't sound creepy, you provide them with valuable content 
you show that you care about their business even after the project, the website is already finished. And what's the most important thing, you can't, you, 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 you make it this way that they can't forget about you. So if they have anything to do concerning their uh, web, website job or, or, uh, or, or uh, internet presence, they will come to you because you appear in their, in their inbox, on LinkedIn inbox or whatever, every three months. They don't have to do contact info for you. You're constantly in very conscious. So the good tip is, uh, the, the, the good way of re remembering about it is setting a reminder in a Google Calendar about, uh, about sending them such, uh, such uh, email or in your CRM software if you use one, but keeping in touch on low level, but constantly is very important in maintaining the relationship with your customers. And you won't have a successful business, especially when you are a web freelance web developer, without good relationships with your customers. Because if they don't need relationship, they will go to the big company. They go to you because they have an actual human. They want to have actual human working for them. So the relationship is everything in <coughs> financial development. So I've said that you want to keep in touch with your customers, for example, via email, but never sell via email. Let them come to you because if they need something, they will approach you, not you will approach them. So if you want to get a new deal, new business for, for, from your existing customer, you have to always call or always have a face-to-face -face meeting or a Skype call. Never email, <coughs> nobody sold anything good on email. Like how many cold emails do you get every time? How many of them you actually delete without uh, reading them? Well, I did it at least five of them a day. So always call, maybe you should schedule this call via email, but never send uh, emailing people. What to sell them? Well, first of all, uh, you could sell, uh, sell them website maintenance and you can do that just after you finish the project. For example, we, always included maintenance contract into the website contract. So it was maintained by us for at least a year and it was a part of general contract we signed with, the, with our customer. But we all here know that we have to update the website, we have to keep it secure. So it's very important to educate your customers that the website maintenance, and it, it's very hard as well, but the website maintenance is very important. So this is the first service, the most like default service you can sell them. Apart of that, after let's say one year, you can sell them one-time job, uh, considering like website looks, maybe update, uh, layout update, maybe some new graphic features, maybe making uh, testing if it's responsive and displaying okay on the newest devices maybe uh, adjusting the website layout to the retina display so it wasn't you know so small so there are several one-time jobs you can sell to your customers and keep the relationship going and keep them paying and of course security audits like we know that uh, open source cmss have a lot of advantages but also a lot of disadvantages so we all know how often uh, security, <coughs> security updates are published. So uh, after six months or one year, you should run full security audit for your customer. And it's quite cool because you can charge for the security audit. And if you educated your customers properly before, he, won't, he or she won't have problem with buying it if it's not too expensive. And the security audit with, with, with will probably generate some work for you. So it will always, you always will have something to make better on the website when it comes to security 
updating extensions, uh, maybe screening additionally, maybe two-factor certification. A lot of things can be done out of security audit. Okay, who has attended a local networking or business event, your local, like in your neighborhood, in last 12 months? Okay, so uh, I didn't do that for a long time because I, well, it's difficult. Like, if you are introvert, and I am introverted person, it's very difficult to just overcome those limitations. But uh, just after we started the, the, the perfect web, before perfect dashboard, uh, we found uh, ourselves with situation that we have no money, well, we, everyone being rather than that, no projects, we had five people already working for us, waiting for their salaries. And we, it was middle of summer. It is really that, that season in Krakow. And, well, what to do? So, because I had a real estate background before, I decided to go to real estate fair, organizing Krakow during summer, because during summer people actually look for apartments. And, you know, both, both fairs were like construction companies, developers, like uh, market very good apartments, houses, this kind of stuff. So I went to, the, to those fairs. I walked from the one booth to another, talking with those people about their new projects, which, were, which, were, which they planned. Before, I reviewed websites of all of companies exhibiting on the fairs, and I found the ones which had like outdated websites, not very nice looking, this kind of this kind of stuff. So I found those companies at the first, and I asked them if they plan to do another building or, 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 or house or, or a new project, and they did. So what I did, I showed them the old website. I had it printed because it was eight years ago, so we didn't have iPads then. So I had it printed and I had also prepared new layout for the same website. So I just showed them in a way before and after. And it wasn't much work because I only did homepage. It was like maybe 20, 20 websites. It took me maybe two days to, to, to create a very simple but modern looking design of both home pages and I said, okay, you can have it in two months. So imagine if you have your new investment going, how how much it will boost your marketing if you have responsive website, if you have some good call to actions on the website, if you have a reservation form for uh, open day, like for looking at the actual apartment. So think about it how easy it will be to promote your company on Facebook if the website will be linked properly in the Facebook feed. Back then it was a big issue. So I spent all day at the first, I got projects for the next six months from that, from one day. So I spent two days preparing for the job one day actually doing the job and then I had the problem because I didn't have enough people to, 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 to create all those projects. And apparently we had have, we have not no problem anymore. So your local networking, business, entrepreneur events, it's a great source of potential clients. So remember about that because we can't afford just to sit and wait for business come to us via our website. It will, of course it will. But imagine that interacting with people in person, you can actually get a better deal. I will get back to this later. But this is very important thing and it helped us a lot, especially when we were starting our business. So where you should go, I've already said about it. So first of all, local business entrepreneurs, networking events, even BNI, 
Okay, I know it's very early at the morning, but from the time you, the, from time to time you can get up early or just go <coughs> not go to sleep and attend the event. Local first, like construction industry, I said before, like horeca industry. So restaurants, uh, bars, clubs, they have their first as well. They a lot of service providers exhibit on this first. You are one of the service providers for them, but. To be honest, it's your neighborhood. Uh, you should know the best what's happening. Just reach out, find out, go to those events, see what's happening then, and try to <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no problem, and try to find new business. Right? Because the business, the new business for you is waiting. And what to do at those events? <laughs> Well, networking events are not easy. I know that personally. I do like uh, two networking events a, a month, and I have to go to states at least six times a year and do five networking events a day then. So it's not easy, but if you have a right strategy, you can do it in a time efficient way and not uh, die in between. So the first thing is, uh, don't sell. You're not there to sell. You are there to establish an actual relationship. Then you will get asked about what you do. And this is the moment when you use your elevator pitch about your business. Do you know what's elevator pitch? Yeah. So for those who, who don't know, elevator pitch is a very short presentation, five sentences, it cannot last longer than 30 seconds and you have to cover three issues, three topics with this elevator pitch. What you do, why you are better than others and what problem do you solve. Because if someone looks for a new website of, or if someone doesn't have a website, it means this person has a problem. This problem can be solved in a several different ways. The main thing is to find your unique way of solving this problem. Just to be able to prove to those guys that you are better than other finance developers. So these five sentences should let people know that you are a professional, self-confident, experienced person who will be able to deliver the solution for their problem in less than two months and it's okay when it comes to web development yes what was your elevator pitch uh, my elevator pitch was that we don't do websites because the website is not a purpose it's a mean to actually achieve a goal so we didn't do, uh, I, we didn't do a website we solved the problem of income being not high enough so we did all the internet presence for our customers concerning all activities he can perform in the internet and our main goal was to make a website and whole internet presence in a way that it will pay back in two months so no matter how much he paid for the website we made it was an investment so my how we made us different than other companies. We didn't do, we, 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 we weren't doing websites. Our services was investment, which was crucial to increase income and profit of, of the company. You're at 15 sentences. Uh, <laughs> you know, to be honest, I forgot that pitch because I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, it was more or less the, the message. <coughs> So, um, if you want to learn how to get out, get out most of the events, uh, you should find uh, actually Robert Jacoby. You might know him. He claims he's a president of Joomla. But apart of being president, he's the king. Sorry? He's the king. He's the king. Yeah, yeah. I've actually Call him your grace. I've actually added a, a crown to his picture on, 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 on Twitter. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if he likes it, but well, it's not my problem anymore. It, it was retweeted anyway. So, uh, thank him, because apart of being president of Juma, he's a great businessman. 
and he's the best at, at networking events. So he will be probably able to tell you a lot. He, and I know him personally that he is eager to share his wisdom. So use his experience, he's great at this. And if it's not possible for you to talk with him today or tomorrow, you can find his guest blog post at Perfect Dashboard's blog when he covers this topic very, uh, in a very efficient and very easy way. Okay, you said... Hey, I had, had another suggestion. Yes? Ask people to hear what they do first because you can adjust your pitch to better match their exactly. needs. You're right. You're Are you right. interested in what they're about, offering them a solution? You're, you're, you're always, helpful. Yes, you're always the second one to speak, especially when it comes to speaking about your business. So uh, a lot of you actually attended local networking events or business events. How many of you has given a speech about uh, having a website and ab about internet presence? You, 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 okay, not bad. So, this speech was not to our developers, but to your potential clients. Am I right? Okay, so this is very, very uh, good percentage. Actually, the best one I've seen by now. Uh, why, you should, why you should do that, uh, the rest of you especially? Because, um, imagine how, why the potential client should choose you over other finance developer. Why? Because you have a nice website. Everyone has a nice website. Because you are cheap, there is always be someone cheaper than you. And so, you don't want that business. Yes. And so maybe they should choose you because you are actually good. Probably that's the reason. But are you sure that your potential clients know that you are good? If you imagine, what have you done to show that you are an expert in the industry? Website is not enough anymore. So, that's why you should build a personal branding for yourself, a profile of an expert. So, Duke gave a wonderful speech about presenting. Duke positions himself here as someone who knows how to present. So you should position locally yourself as someone who knows what to do with this whole internet thing. So you should choose like your one field of expertise. Let's say, I don't know, conversion hacking or SEO or something else. It's up to you, but you have to have a field of expertise, then you have to have two presentations ready and rehearsed, better than mine, and, and deliver them as often as possible. Because if you have it ready already, it will take, what, one hour of your time? It's not so much, but it can give you a lot of new business time. So, uh, I'll, Apart of leading presentations, you can engage in conversations on Facebook or Quora on Reddit, but again, not with other developers. Let's find, look for groups on Facebook, your local groups concerning doing business, concerning having a cafe, restaurant, maybe e-commerce, and help people for free. Under your own name, don't sell. Just answer the damn questions. They have a lot of questions to be answered. They don't, know, they don't have the knowledge you have. Share this knowledge. Show yourself as an expert. Also, if you are at the events, be different. Be characteristic. Wear, I don't know, red glasses. Or a funny hat. Or always wear a suit. Or uh, pick a pink suit like I did yesterday. But be characteristic, be recognizable among the crowd, and let people remember you as a guy or girl who. They, can, they may not remember your name, especially not at the beginning, but if you are this guy in red glasses, 
and they saw you you speaking, maybe when you they will find you over coffee break, and they will ask you questions, and then you can answer those questions and show yourself as an expert. And believe me, after they see that you are helpful, it won't take long for them to ask you for a quote from their services. Because people want experts working for them, not web developers, experts in online presence. So it's not enough to code a proper website. You have to help them grow their business to the internet. Otherwise, you are just another web developer competing on price or time and you are frustrated. Believe me, I was frustrated a lot of times. So, please find a way of stop being frustrated as soon as possible. Because we have one life and we sh don't want to waste it on being frustrated. And it, uh, it leads me to the cherry on the top. Uh, actually, when you create a website, uh, you spend maybe, I don't know, 20, 30% of your time working on the elements your customer, your client will actually see. Rest of the work is allocated on the backend, other stuff. So spend few extra hours to add some visual extra something, like a wow factor, some unique element for your customer to enjoy. Because in this way, first thing, your customer will feel that uh, your, ma your work was worth his money and that he got something more even than he expected and he will be definitely more eager to recommend you and I will get back to recommendations uh, to other people because he will remember this feeling of being surprised pleasantly like wow, I didn't expect that I can have such a good thing so if you, for example, work in that flow that you present a layout to your customer before actual integrating the layout with the website, don't show everything. <coughs> don't show everything. Show the, this, this little extra thing at the time he actually receives the finished project. Believe me, he will be even happier than you think. Learn. Well, I know that learning takes a lot of time. I also know that if you are a freelancer, uh, you don't have much time. But this is exactly, exactly why you should learn. Because if you learn, you can avoid uh, making very costly mistakes. You can avoid reinventing the wheel. Like maybe somebody already did something which you need. So just get inspired. And this is... Uh, quite important to see what experts do because it will help you to work better and to become a better expert. So, if you, for example, feel that your project is not sophisticated enough, you want to add this cherry on the top I was talking about a minute ago, go to Behance Map. Show our design, uh, look at our designs, get inspired. If you don't know how to write a proper contract, you can use ours, they are free, prepared by our low team. So don't spend two weeks on preparing contract and writing it. It won't be good, probably, not at first, and it's a waste of time. Use the free template. If you don't want to use a free template, pay a lawyer, even small amount of money, but have the contract prepared for you by professional. What's more? Uh, if you think that you could be better in UI, use good UI. This is my favorite blog, favorite website concerning UX. Like this guy, he's from Canada, he's the best. Not because he knows most, but because he presents the knowledge in a very, very simple way. So he actually has these drawings of do's and don'ts, like for example, an example of uh, a form, contact form, good contact form, a bad contact form. I actually, when I was doing UX in our company, I printed out like 50 of those drawings. I stick them around my desk just to have it in my sight all the time. 
It was the best UX training I've ever got. And it was for free. He even sent you emails between drawings. Wow. And Bureau of Digital. This is an organization of uh, American web development agencies. I've attended their event on February. It was called Owner Summit. So it was the event for CEOs and owners of the biggest web development agencies in States. So those guys are very experienced. Some of them were doing this job for 20 years, yes. And they are very eager to learn, to, to teach people and to, 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 to share their experience. So you can become a member. They have great Slack channel. They, you can ask anything because they're not your direct competition. So they will help you because why not? Uh, they have great base camp. They have great knowledge base. Uh, I personally, I've learned a lot from them. And I was even sorry that I found out about Bureau Digital just before shutting down the agency business. Because I felt that I could learn so much more and do it even better and it wasn't possible anymore because we had to shut it down. So, also Chris Lemma, uh, if you need something more about business, if you want to have more information, more knowledge about events, about how to sell for more, about how to increase your income, I know him personally, he's a great guy, he's a VP of one of the biggest hosting companies in States, but also He's uh, very focused on helping freelance developers in, uh, in, in increasing their income, in growing their business. So he has a great blog. Also, he provides like one-to-face to, uh, to -face consultations. So it, he charges by minute actually, but maybe in five minutes he can help you. But anyway, uh, the content of his blog is, is very interesting. You, there's a lot of to learn, definitely. So I would recommend it to you very, very strongly. So uh, probably you have your own source because there are like plenty of that in the internet. So <clears throat> try to try to go try to use this source regularly and share it with your friends here in back. Okay, who offers recurring services? I mean, build, yeah, monkey. Okay. So this is like, I am not good at mass, but maybe 30%, 20% of the audience. So, uh, four years ago, we were running Perfect Web for four years already, and we found ourselves in the situation that we have to, once again, Pay for the internet office leasing salaries like you have to do every month. And it wasn't a situation that we didn't have any projects. No, we had good, very profitable, profitable projects going on. But <clears throat> we were behind the schedule. It wasn't our fault, but that's life. It's quite often a situation that you are behind the schedule on the project, not from your fault. So, we found ourselves in a situation that we had 50,000 euros frozen in very profitable projects and no money on the account. Soon. And still, not five, but ten people to pay. So, we somehow managed to solve the situation, uh, but we decided that we cannot have this situation anymore. Like, we are quite big company, serious company, and we can't have cash flow problems. It's not cool anymore. We are not as young, small company, which can from time to time be late paying the, bill, the internet bill. So we decided to find a solution how to bill our customers recurrently every month, just to be always sure that we are able to pay our bills. Okay, our salaries were not so, our owner's salaries weren't so important, but leasing salaries of our employees, they had to be paid. So we found the solution. <coughs> We offered uh, some products, uh, I mentioned a couple of them here today, to our customers. And it took us two years to educate them and to create a proper offer, which was profitable for us and for them. Because always both parties have to profit for that from the deal, otherwise it's not, it's not a good deal. 
Uh, but we succeeded. When we are shutting down uh, our agency business to focus only on perfect dashboard, 70% of our income was generated by recurring, recurring contract, recurring cash. And it is very good proportion and you should aim to this proportion. Why? Once again, very simple. Your bills are recurring, but your project salary is not. So, what will you have when you have to pay a rent and you don't have any money for that? Well, I know that if you are a finance developer, you probably don't have 10 people to pay. But still, you have to pay your rent, maybe lease of your car or something else. You have to have the money. Or what if you are sick and you can't work for three, three, three weeks? What happens then? So your, <coughs> your income should be recurring and you should generate enough recurring <coughs> income to keep you living, to keep you going. I don't, I, I'm not speaking about buying a new car each month. I'm speaking about buying an actual food, paying electricity bill. It has to be recurring. You can't risk not having money for that because your customer is on vacation and won't accept the project for another month. So, what you can, uh, what else are, uh, uh, what other advantages of recurring income you, you can get? First of all, you make your customer more attached to you. I covered this topic before. Then, you work with people you know and trust. So, it's not always a new customer. You, you know how much he earns, how much he can pay you, uh, that he will actually pay you on time or not and take it under consideration while doing the job. And you can plan your expenses for the future because if you know that you will be more or less earning X amount of money next year, you can save up for a cool vacation, you can get a new car lease or save up your, for your uh, retirement, but you actually have a space to manage your expenses because they are predictable. <clears throat> How to do that? Well, first thing is that you are, if you are already working for your existing customers by hour, change it to the monthly plan. So if your customer pays you, buys from you, for example, on average 10 hours a month, call him and tell him, you know what? You pay me, for example, 500 euro a month on average for 10 hours of my time. Let's make it 400 euro every month for 10 hours of my time. But you pay upfront. If you don't use for those hours, they will be transferred to another month. But you pay monthly bill of 400 euros. And if you have 10 such customers, it's 4,000 euros. 4,000 euros is pretty good salary all around the Europe. So it's not so difficult if you think about it, because if you have, for example, 30 customers for, we, for who you work from time to time, you can calculate it, calculate it in the way that it will give you in one year stable income, allowing you to live on. So, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but. I don't think this is a really good idea. Why? Um, because when you set up a price with a customer and you will lower the price for the same amount of work, the customer even wants more work and will um, that you decrease your price even more in, the, uh, in a couple of months or so. So they're dealing all the time. The better thing, on my experience, is that you say to your customer, okay, I work for you. Um, this is 500 euros for 10 hours. I increase my work for 12 hours for the same amount, but you guarantee me we do this until the end of the year. So every month, it's the same amount, it's just for hours more. Yeah. That's a better deal instead of going down on the price, hopefully that you get um, more other customers because your resources are maybe not available because you can't yeah. um, work for 10 hours, 10, um, for 10 customers a month and get everyone. 
from everyone from the euros. Yeah, you you're right, actually, this. because this is like a second approach, because it depends on your customer, because you know your customer the best. So some of them would go with but, a little bit yeah, lower price. But I would, yeah, but I would never but you recommend don't to do lower it. price. I would only recommend to do yeah, yeah, more hours. But never but discount the price, price, always give a gift. Yeah, yeah this exactly. is a point. Never but, discount the price, because then, then price becomes negotiable, and then you spend a lot of time discussing price. That's true. Uh, if, you, if your price is your price, and that's the non-negotiable thing, then you can always throw in, hey, you book us this week, we'll give you this for free. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I was forced to do both things, hmm. because still, it depends on the customer. But uh, our prices were negotiable depending on the product. Okay. So it's a... Uh, Actually, the, 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 it depends on the way you, you design your business and what your business plan is. But the main thing is to transform yeah, exactly. hourly rate, like hourly built invoices to recurring uh, fixed, yeah. fixed price. And don't let it bank more than two months. Sorry? Don't let it bank more than two months. Yes. Otherwise, you get to the end of a year and, you and have they haven't done any work for the entire year yeah. and you got to, you know, give up your entire month with no other income to meet their needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right as well. Uh, well, I cannot cover all details because I already, yeah. already I'm short of, uh, I'm running out of time. So what can be done, uh, actually, uh, instead of maintaining website, increasing security, you can do some advanced analytics or conversion hacking for your customers, because this is something which has to be done uh, regularly. Uh, and uh, probably you know your customers as proved second ago the best. So if you know their business, and you should because only in this situation you are perceived as an expert, you can find a service which can be built regularly and profitable for them. This is the most important thing. Because if they don't profit, if they, if they don't get anything out of it, even if they decide to, to, to have this contract, but you resign very shortly. <coughs> I want to think to, to get more money because um, to sell more hours is to offer to your customer that you do a documentation. Because so many customers don't have documentation about the services, their IT stuff, their web developing things. Yes. And um, my experience is documentation yeah. is very important and they customer <coughs> one that will pay for it. They yeah, do it, but we have to offer this because nobody thinks about that is an important need to try. That's true. We never included documentation in the price of the initial project, uh, and we didn't do an actual documentation. We did uh, video tutorials because it was easier. Like we covered the most common things they had to do operating their CMS, and it was more like they could choose if they want to have a documentation like written down with screenshots or video tutorials and uh, they prefer video tutorials. It depends on the customer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, for example, work for financial services bank or something like that, they need a paper because of yeah. the law or something. Mm -hmm. like so. Exactly. So once again, it's a matter of knowing your customers' needs. Yeah. And you have to know your customers' needs concerning website uh, web presence better than he does. Um, how enough? Uh, how to do that? How to make recurring uh, contracts uh, valuable? So you can try using tools, but you have to be very careful about picking those tools. Because you should choose only those tools who actually, which actually give you profit. What I mean by this? It means that using that tool, you save enough time to increase your income thanks to them and generate enough profit of using them to cover the cost of tools and have more money than before. So you should think about how time consuming is using an actual tool, how time consuming is configuring the actual tool. So, Sometimes it's a good thing to spend two days on configuring the tool which will serve you very well and save you a lot of time fix, for example, automatic some stuff. Sometimes it's not. So it's for you up to decide, but don't make those decisions emotionally. 
Don't believe in all marketing bullshit you see on the website. Ask for recommendations, ask your friends in your community, and test the tool before you actually start to use it in your business. And test it quite, quite profoundly. Uh, also, you can resell tools and services. So, for example, um, backup, automatic backups. <clears throat> it's actual resell. You can, for example, uh, use a tool for automating backups and tell your customer, okay, uh, you will pay me additionally 10 months or 20 euro per month for backups, and you will be sure that your backup is always ready to use in case of emergency. You will pay for the tool 100 euro per month, for example, but you can sell the tool to 50 customers for 20 euro per month. It generates income from nothing. It's called passive income. This is the best income because it doesn't require any work. Uh, you can also resell services. <coughs> so if you don't know anything about Google Analytics, if you don't know anything about HIP or Facebook ads, find someone who knows and resell his work. This way, you can still get good provision on the someone's work and you provide better service for your customer because he doesn't <coughs> have to look for five different service providers to serve his one website because you provide all service he needs. You don't have to know how to do everything by yourself. You can partner up with someone else. And that leads me to the cooperation. So who from you has taken or given away a project to another finance developer during the last 12 months? Pretty cool. And who has shared a project? Great. So you already know the advantages. Why? Because, first of all, it's, why, it's quite common, you know that, that uh, one week you have nothing to do really, another week you are so loaded with work that you can't sleep. <clears throat> and it's not a good thing because you're getting frustrated the first week and you are not no good in your job the second week. So the thing is that if you are overloaded, you can give away project and still build them, it's reselling the service. If you are free, you can get some backup plan B project just to save your month and have for those bills until you establish good recurring income. So uh, it is very, very, uh, very beneficial for everyone. And what is important, if you have some, if you have a chance to get a deal with very complicated project, if you have a group of people you can work with, you can take this project and even though it's too difficult or too, too, too complicated or too time consuming for the one guy, maybe in a group of five, if you divide the task properly, you can have a great deal, great success and great project to your portfolio and satisfied customer. And uh, it's also very, very uh, beneficial when you want to go on vacation. Because this way you can, for example, spend the two weeks on a beach or going through the bush, whatever you like, not worrying about the website being up today, being up time, about everything's working fine, about uh, the customer calling in the middle of night in different times and with stupid questions, because you have someone on it. And then you give the same help to another one. So it's very it's very comfortable because you can live a little, not worrying about your job. How to find those people? First of all, if you work at home, try working at co-working space at least three times a week. This is the most natural environment for uh, meeting new people. You can even get some new business from them, but it's not so important. You can meet people, <coughs> You can observe them, how they work. You can see how do they uh, play the meeting be be between them and their customers. You can sometimes overhear how they talk to their customers and you can decide if you want to work with this girl or guy. So you can test them 
before actually establishing a partnership with them. So, uh, if you work at Coop instead, and if you got to know the, your local freelance community, you have to pick the people you want to work with. You, you don't have to like them, you have to respect them professionally. Because this is the way you don't want someone not professional taking care of your customers when you're on vacation. So if you have that, <coughs> consider working with a graphic designer. Because a lot of, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of freelance developers who do all the job themselves. So uh, graphic design, to my experience, graphic design of the project was the most time consuming part of the project. Uh, deciding of the shade of the pink on the logo, deciding if the button should look like this or that, or, or do we want to have this picture in, in the background or another one. It's very time consuming. It uh, requires a lot of meetings or calls between you and your customers. And it means that you don't code. And you can't really build that time, like on our. It's, from time to time, it's difficult because you get asked, okay, so I ask one question about the picture and I get like 10 minutes on the invoice for that. It doesn't always <coughs> help your relationship with your customer. And the relationship, as stated before, is very important. So if you work with a graphic designer, he can do that for you. You concentrate on what you do the best. So coding and securing the website and making it properly coded. And he deals with colors and all this stuff. And probably he can be even, he or she can be even better than you. Because I know only three developers who are good designers and good frontends. Because it, it requires different skill set and different set of mind. No graphic designer will be good developer and vice versa. So, especially if it frustrates you doing graphic design, find someone who will do it for you. You can still have a provision on that, and you don't have to do the thing you don't like to do. It's very important to like what you do in your life. Um, when you proceed on the slide, I think there's a line missing. Uh, we are juniors and uh, most of us are um, sharing a project. And so in Joomla user group, every month in a meeting, so yeah, if you speak about the sure. juniors, it's uh, easier to, to share projects. Yeah, you're right. It's because I'm not a developer, so, so, so I didn't do it personally, but I knew that guys from my team did. We let non-developers play. It's Sorry? Okay. We'll let a non-developer play. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> a good recommendation would be also, um, I tried to work in a co-working space, and I realized that sometimes it's not a good place to make phone calls with customers, mm -hmm. because everybody can hear that. Yeah. So yeah. this is a little bit difficult, and um, when it comes to the decision that I want to have an office outside of my apartment, I searched a little bit and found an, a place where uh, um, different um, companies are sharing closed offices in yes. one space. Um, but we, we share the meeting room, the kitchen, and everything. And they are also a graphic designer, a developer, an IT consultant, and we are support us each other with different projects, yeah. which is quite good. So you have your own office, you can close the door, that's fine. Um, you have to pay the rent as well every month, okay? But you have to pay co-working Yeah, well. it depends on and the co-working space, because I know co-working space, uh, co spaces here in Krakow who has uh, phone booths, mm. so you can have your phone call private. Yeah, it's not applicable when you... But not when every call. The customers, they call maybe every hour or so. It's, you cannot always um, pick your stuff, go to the phone booth, make a call. You need your own desk where you can leave your things overnight, yeah, that's true. Um, come back on the next morning and start to work again where you stopped it the night before. You're right. It still depends on the way you like working. Exactly. Okay. So, so, for example, uh, in States, I've seen a lot of co working spaces uh, with separate rooms and open spaces so uh, you could even like rent the room for hours separate rooms if you had a project or one month had a project uh, which re required a 
big focus. <clears throat> so uh, I know that not everyone is for like bigger city, but if you have a chance to go around, see how those co-working spaces actually look, you can find the one which suits you the best. And if you don't want to go to work there, just check out their schedule because every co-working space have meetings and yes. evening, just like user groups exactly. from Joomla, WordPress, whatever, and they all need support and you can find someone who can help you with it. It's a great meeting. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't go there to, to get work done, you go there to talk to other people exactly. and bounce ideas. Yeah. And build network. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever the way you pick, but the outcome should be get to know your environment, get to know your local freelance community. You cannot imagine how helpful it can be in your work. Uh, it leads me to the recommendations. So, just before we decided to <coughs> create Perfect Dashboard, we had a very difficult project to we made for the one of the biggest Polish law firms specialized in IT. It wasn't an easy project. It was very long, difficult and stressful. We finally uh, managed to finish it and we taken our client for drinks, just closing, closing it. And we asked, as we always did, for recommendation. Before asking him for recommendation, we made sure that he is actually happy with our work, of course. And uh, he was a, he is a big time lawyer. Like really, he knows people. He introduced T-Mobile to Poland personally. So uh, he recommended us. And thanks to his recommendation, we got a deal, one year long deal, one year old, one year long project, which was profitable enough for us to stop making websites for whole year keep our office, keep our 15 people team, pay all the expenses, pay even our salaries, and create perfect effort for scratch. So it, it, it is exactly what a good recommendation can get you. A game changer deal. And why you should ask for recommendation? Okay, I know not every recommendation can give you 2 million euro contract but it can give you a pre-prepared customer. So it's like uh, sending someone to someone who is recommended to you is almost as easy as sending to your existing customer. Why? Because it's like being introduced to your future life partner by your friend. It's easier to start a conversation. You're not so afraid. It's not so stressful. If you get introduced, well, big love can come out, come out of it. So don't ask, don't afraid to ask for recommendations. Don't have, don't be afraid to ask for email intros. Don't be afraid to ask for live recommendations at the events. You might get a great project from that. And this is like the you know the term chain of trust. If I trust you, and you recommend me to someone to you, for example. Uh, you, I gave, I don't know you, but I give this, this credit of trust because someone I trust recommended you to me. That's how LinkedIn works. Just like Google rankings. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's like SEO in real life. And yeah, so especially when we are freelancer developers or very small team type developers. And how many of you use time tracking software? Time tracking. Time tracking, time tracking is actually a good keyword because you need to come to an end now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I sorry. know. <laughs> so, uh, I just pass one slide because you all use this software. Uh, what I wanted to what I wanted to state very very fast is that if you use the right software and you track your time, it gives you a possibility to see how profitable the project is and work faster. It's not a very, very un, 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 uh, un nice, uh, not nice corporate stuff. 
Uh, if you keep yourself organized, keep yourself focused, if you work in open space, use your headphones for example, it's definitely, it definitely helps, helps you, helps you to, to work faster. If you work faster, you have more free time. Try Toggy, if you haven't heard of time tracking. It works with Trello and uh, it keeps, it's free for the first account and uh, it's really good for time tracking. Okay. So during one hour, and you have said it took me only 40 minutes, but during one hour, it was only a tip of the iceberg. Like all those strategies, they worked for us. They helped us to become happier, better paid developers. Uh, we have this free ebook. You can download it. You don't have to use Perfect Dazzle to do that. Uh, we go into all whole, all detailed set of each of the strategy, giving real time examples, real life examples and showing how we use them in order to, 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 to increase our efficiency and our income. So if you find it interested, is interesting, download this ebook, e uh, read it if you want, and I do hope it will help you in becoming happier, better paid, more efficient web developers. And well, thank you for your time. I'm